Oh, hi. Um, welcome. My name is Bradley Takahashi. Welcome to Community Corner. Uh, this particular session, I'm pretty excited to have a couple of uh, professional, I guess I would call them health kind of experts. Um, first, we have Shirley Matthews, uh, Dr. Shirley Matthews, who's a psychologist, and Carlos Sanchez, who's a personal trainer. And um, Shirley, uh, you, I, you're here to, today to talk about kind of an exciting um, structured support group. I, uh, what is it exactly? I mean, maybe you can help me out here. Uh. Yeah, I actually am really excited about this. I'm trying to uh, start an intuitive eating support group uh, here in town, and um, I, I'm excited to come here and talk to people about it. Intuitive support group. No, intuitive eating Mm -hmm. support group. Well, what does intuitive me eating do mean? Because I thought that's kind of what we all did until we learned that we better eat our vegetables. Well, that's exactly what it is. Um, it is what it sounds like it is. It's about going back to learn how to eat in a natural way. Um, eating in a way that's not about the rules that you've learned that have separated you from natural feelings of hunger and bringing you back to just the true joy of of of, of eating and of taste, of sensation, and of knowing yourself. Well, but don't all these rules that have come up and they've layered it on top of us, it's been for our own good because if it were just left up to myself, I'd be eating, um, well, roast beef sandwiches all the time, I guess. <laughs> you know, some, something, not a balanced diet. <laughs> well, no, actually, that's probably not true. I mean, they've done some research, and what they found is that when children, for example, are left to their own devices, yeah. what they find is typically they actually will eat a variety of foods. They won't Chocolates, just... Chocolates, <laughs> uh, 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 no. mints. No. no. They actually will, will eat um, a variety of foods, including things that are healthful for them. So, um, but we've lost that, is basically. And which is why, of course, um, this is how the support group comes into, into play, is, is to have a group of people to relearn this with. How they, I mean, this yeah. intuitive e eating sounds almost like a, uh, a, a term of art, uh, you know, that uh, there's, a, there's a particular structure or there's a philosophy behind it, is there? There is, and, and I can't, I don't own the structure at all, as a matter of fact. I'm, um, it's based on the work of uh, two women, uh, Evelyn Trebol and Elise Reich. And they both uh, put together, they're re registered dietitians, both of them out in California. Um, they've put together what really is a revolutionary program that, that they have used to help people with eating disorders mm -hmm. and then found that it was just as effective in working with all of their, all of their clients who are coming for nutritional counseling. So even though so. It's, it almost sounds counterintuitive, the whole notion of intuitive eating is good for you is what the whole premise is? is that it definitely is. And, and the results that they're clients have gotten and the results that I'm seeing are that people, um, the people they lose weight, they come to a, they get to a more na a natural weight, not necessarily model thin, that kind of thing. But they also just enjoy, they enjoy life more, they enjoy themselves more. They, they look at the whole person in this process, both the psychological aspects of food and our relationship to food as well as our relationship to our bodies, which is also how it is that I happen to um, begin my own work with Carlos. Carlos, here. in fact, that's a good segue. That's a good TV word I learned, segue. <laughs> um, first, I thought of something you wrote, but that was something else. <laughs> so, uh, Carlos, can you explain uh, what you do and uh, uh, where you do it and how it kind of fits in with this whole intuitive, I guess not just the intuitive eating, but the intuitive whatever it is that you do? All right, so, um, uh, my name is Carlos and I, uh, I'm a personal trainer and um, I have an exercise class, a structured exercise class that we do here in Maplewood in town in the park, in Memorial Park. And um, it gives people an opportunity to participate in a regular exercise program in a structured setting um, with built-in support where you have other people there with you. And we're doing all sorts of exercises, um, working um, basically everything uh, on the whole body. There's some cardio, there's strength training, there is um, some um, obstacle course related. What, what, is it called anything? I mean, what you what you do this particular program? Um, uh, it's 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 a it's a boot camp class. So it's a mixture. It's a hybrid, and um, similar to um, what Shirley does in, in her in her approach in, in getting people to be in the moment, 
um, which I think is really helpful in, um, to help along with intuitive eating, being in the moment um, with the exercise. For those 45 minutes, people are in the moment. You, know, you don't have time to um, start drifting and thinking about other things. And for like a person with ADD, that's important, right? <laughs> good. But like, okay, uh, I'm thinking if there's a, a perfect parallel to intuitive eating, the intuitive exercise class would be like, I get to sort of exercise whatever I feel like it. And <laughs> ha have there been studies that show kids, if you let them do whatever they want, that will eventually they'll have a well-rounded physical activity? Oh, is there anything that's even similar to that, or you're a little more structured? Yeah, well, well it's, it's a little bit more structured, but it is important that whatever activity you participate in is something that's fun, it's enjoyable, um, provides variety, um, because easily um, from exercise or any type of movement, you, you, you get bored, the body adapts to the, to the movement. So we're, all, we're constantly changing and doing different things, and everyone's working at their own level. Um, Sometimes we do something, we, 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 everybody reinforces each other and kind of give each other uh, mutual support to go through the exercises. Um, but, uh, yeah. You know, actually, um, if you think about if kids left to their own devices, forget about that, we'll mm -hmm. go with that food thing, but they actually will um, uh, not just sit around and vegetate in front of a TV screen. I mean, if there were a bunch of kids and they, there was no TV there, they, they actually would get to a level where they, they use their bodies, their exercise quite a bit, right? Isn't that right? It's like, so yeah. h how do you, I mean, this whole intuitive eating thing, I see you have a book there that's called that. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, at first blush, it sounds like, great, I can forget all those rules. But um, if it were as simple as that, I mean, all these rules came up because people were sort of left to their own devices and they were going to the wrong places. So how, do you, how does that actually work? Well, I think well, what we would do in the support group is, first of all, just sort of um, take some time to go back to the basics, which is, believe it or not, many of the people that I've worked with have lost touch with the concept of hunger. They've been in such denial about how they feel about many things um, that they, they can't tell anymore. And so that's where we start with it, which, te which is teaching people once again to experience that, to not be afraid of that, um, to find what level of hunger is the amount that allows them to eat well, not overeat or undereat. And, um, and, and can I ask you, like, mm -hmm. what's a, is there a particular exercise that, I mean, what's one of the first things that you do if I were in your support group? How would I get there? The, the really simple things. It's not, you know, it's not something that anybody couldn't do. I mean, it, someone could probably just buy the book and not even participate in the group and do it, which is um, what people do. But of course, some of what you do is, is just back to things like the journaling. And I, I do both things. One is I have people do actually r writing exercises where they are exploring their feelings through some writing. And then I also try to get them to, um, the, the best word I guess is to meditate on things, to take your time, and which is not something that comes naturally, especially to the women that I work with. They've gotten so used to uh, giving time away to everyone else that they've lost sight of what it's like to give it back to themselves. So some of the basics are to start there with right. basic things like hunger and actually how am I feeling in this moment. Well, I, I, I can only speak from personal experience. I mean, I know there's times that I eat and I'm not even hungry mm -hmm. because I just think that would taste so good there. And, 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 you know, and I'll eat it. I'll even eat it when my stomach's full. I'll just keep eating until my stomach hurts. That's like one rule I'm trying to <laughs> don't eat when my stomach hurts so much. Okay. So that's, now, is that you a bad, are welcome to is that a bad rule? <laughs> you know, that, okay, Bradley, don't eat when your stomach's so full. Oh, even though that yeah, sandwich that, would sure taste good. Yeah, but here's the thing is one of the, th you know, I'm not, I'm not going to suggest to people, and I don't think Carlos does either, that you don't eat sometimes for pleasure. I mean, just because you know, you have the opportunity to, to have this amazing chocolate mousse or whatever it is that you absolutely love. It doesn't mean that you don't have it, but you savor those moments. And what you find after a while is that, um, you know, after, sometimes after a couple of bites, it's enough. Yeah. You know, it's, it's sure, it's just good, but you don't need any more. But sometimes I think what happens is when we're eating the way, from that place of, they're going to take it away from me because I'm going to have to go on another diet in two weeks. Then you feel you have to eat as much of it as you possibly can because, you know, no one's going to allow you to have it anymore. So when you eat with permission to savor, to enjoy, to 
take pleasure in what you're doing, whether it's ac exercising and using your body, or eating, or talking, or being with others, you know, it's, it's an authentic way of living. It's a balanced way of living. And that's what this is about, is bringing people to that place. And I think doing thi this kind of thing in a group um, provides people with support. It's easier in a group than if you're by yourself. Absolutely, uh, just like most things, just yeah. like most things, especially when you're learning something new. I mean, one of the things that I love about- Solitaire is the only thing I find more difficult to do in a group. Th well, yes. Yeah. But, but one of the things that's been really <laughs> fun yeah. is that um, is going to the boot camp, um, it's, it's, it's been very enjoyable in part because it's hard. It's not something that came so, you know, easily after you've not exercised with seriously in a long time. And for me, one of the things that's been a, a whole new experience is, um, you know, at being younger, being a college athlete back in the day, I was never the person who came in last. So joining this class and being with a whole you know, range of age groups and body types and being the person who usually comes in, in last has gotten to be kind of okay. You know, it's like, it's just, okay, I'm not in competition with everyone else. I'm in competition with myself in, in getting better and enjoying um, watching myself get stronger and, and have muscles and just feel good. You're, now, you're a psychologist, mm -hmm. which means that uh, besides uh, you, you're, you're able to bring a whole uh, background of, um, how can I call it, uh, 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 learning and approach to, uh, to any particular problem or issue, whether it's food, exercise, mm -hmm. or you know, emotional problems. Like, although, what you started talking about sounded like a pretty big horizon, not just eating. When you're talking, getting back, when you're talking about getting in touch with uh, mm -hmm. everything, I mean, that could, that, could, that could take a long time. I mean, this intuitive yeah. eating, when you first mentioned that to me, I thought, well, that sounds easy. I'll just forget all the rules. But this sounds like it's a little harder than... Um it's a journey, Bradley. I mean, it truly is a journey. And uh, I'm getting hungry thinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. You know, it, it's, it, it is a, it's been, it's a journey. It's an exploration. It's, um, some parts of it have been easier than other parts. There are places where I find even myself, you know, um, getting lost in certain places and finding my way again. Um, but it's, it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. So a support group that you're uh, envisioning uh, fostering and, and nurturing and, and starting up, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it doesn't cost anything. No. Um, no. It, it, how big a group can this be and can you have more than one? I mean, depending on the demand, would, does your schedule or your facilities allow uh, that possibility? Right now, I'd like to keep the groups fairly intimate, and I don't want there to be more than eight people at a time in each group. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm willing to do more than one. Uh, but I, I just think that that would be easier because I think, again, it is a journey. Mm -hmm. And I think when you, when you join, I think I'm going to, I mean, I'm expecting that people will make a commitment, a commitment to do this for themselves and to participate it participate in it in a way that encourages others. Okay. And I'm asking people to commit to eight weeks. Eight weeks. So it'll be an eight-week thing. Uh, yeah. We'll get more details about your own time commitments, Carl, and maybe how these two programs intertwine. We're going to take a little break for about a minute in about 15 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Uh, in the meantime, uh, why don't you guys, uh, it'd be great if you kind of hang around and come back in just a minute. We'll see uh, uh, the, what the rest of Shirley and, and Carlos have to say. Thanks. All right, so. What is that thing? Looks like somebody's double chin. Must have lost it snacking on fruits and vegetables. Hmm. <clears throat> Somebody's gonna trip on that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bradley Takahashi. We're back Hi, again with Community you. Corner um, with uh, our guests this evening, uh, Dr. Shirley Matthews and Carlos Sanchez. Um, both are actually residents of Maplewood. I should have pointed that out. That's what Community Corner is all about. You know, what can we learn from the people that are our neighbors? Um, 
Shirley, you were talking about uh, the actual the structure of this, uh, su um, you said support group, right? Mm -hmm. Like, be small, intimate, eight people or so. Uh, we will show the audience later on at the end of the show the phone number that people, interested people can call in and to get more information about this. Carlos, your boot camp, which uh, I understand is actually under the auspices of the Maplewood Recreational Recreation Department. Also, uh, there's a website for people who are interested in signing up for that as well, right? Yes. We'll put that on www.bootcamp, maplewoodbootcamp.com. Yes. Or can they call uh, Roger Barkley's office at Maplewood and get information as well? Is yes, it called you could, boot, you could call there or um, go to the website or I have also another Okay, and so, number. and actually your, uh, your program runs on eight week. Uh, the, they're actually four week. Oh, four, four weeks. weeks, yes. Okay, and yours would be eight weeks. Eight weeks. I see. Um, so, oh, one thing I was just going to ask you, I mean, something mm -hmm. you said earlier about if we can get back to that place where you're saying a more natural state where you know, people eat things without the compulsion of I better eat it now because I can't eat it later right. uh, and recognizing they can eat something and then I can walk away from it. Right. It reminds me of something, a, a description that somebody told me about the difference between alcoholism and people who are just, I don't know, regular drunk. I'm not mm -hmm. sure people can just drink. Is that you can you can drink a couple of beers or whatever and say, okay, that's enough, or, and you go on, whereas it, it, it's, if you can't stop, then that's, that's an issue. And you're, you describe something that sounds eerily like that in some of this food stuff. Um, what a per it's such a perfect analogy, it really is. I mean, I, th I think for myself, I'm one of those people who manage to diet themselves fat. Huh. And I wasn't, I wasn't fat until I started dieting all the time and making that into a, an unfortunate hobby. And uh, since I've done this, I, like I said, part of the reason I've decided that I wanted to do this is that, um, you know, I jokingly said to you, it's like finding, um, finding a truth and wanting to share it with others. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say, oh, look, I'm all trim and slim now, so I'm perfect, so um, just listen to me. It's going to be, um, I'm a few steps ahead of people who will be starting this journey, but just a few steps. And I'd like the idea of, of doing this with other people as well, as sharing just a little bit of knowledge, coupled with the, you know, my area of expertise, which is that of being a psychologist, and continuing on this journey. I mean, I, I think since I've been doing this, I've lost, you know, 14, 16 pounds, very effortlessly, and I can't believe it myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really has been, I, I have to say, not the effort around taking things away from myself, which is what it used to be, but the effort has been around just taking pleasure in what I do, finding balance, and laughing a whole lot more than I was before. Carlos, does she laugh a lot at boot camp? I mean, yeah. you just... Yeah. <laughs> at the end, when <laughs> yeah. it's over. <laughs> when it's over, yeah. Uh, when it's over, over, yeah. Yeah, well, so, um, I guess, uh, uh, the w would it be the ideal? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you can't just, you always hear, Eating is just one part of the equation. Yeah, right. It's the uh, your, your your physical activity and such, and and same thing uh, about what you offer at boot camp. There's there's no reason anybody who in reasonably good health can't do any of that on their own, right? But it's like, who does? And even the notion of a personal trainer is one. Like I think, boy, do I need? Why would I need a personal trainer? Although I know there's millions of things that I wouldn't do except somebody says you better do that. Right. 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 But I'm not sure that's a healthy thing either. Right. Hmm. It's not, I, I think having an expert who sets helps you set higher goals for yourself than you thought you could attain is probably, you know. Well, and making sure you're 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 using safe techniques. I mean, it's, you can easily injure yourself if you're not using proper techniques hmm. um, when you're doing certain exercises, uh, and having somebody to to hold you accountable um, mm -hmm. as far as hiring a professional, um, and. Um, um, and, and, and helping you with uh, any modifications as far as if you have any special needs with any um, health issues or... Uh, well, Carlos, also, I I is it your opinion that any, almost anybody can do more than they think they can do? Then in other words, if you were there to demand, no matter what it is, 10 more push-ups or something, that, that they can always do more than they would themselves, uh, they'd, they'd be ready to quit on their own compared to if you were Yes, it's, true. It's, it's true. true. it's true. Yes, yeah. when you're if you're working with, uh, if you either have somebody that's you're holding you accountable, or you have a partner that you're working with, or you're working out in a group, you're going to perform um, at a higher level. Um, mm -hmm. That's 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 true. People are gonna they're gonna try to push themselves a little harder. Um, they're gonna, they're not gonna want to let the trainer down, 
or the boot camp instructor or their workout partner, whoever that is. Um, Shirley, what's the psychological reason for that? I mean, I'm thinking evolutionarily wise, how, how is it that people are going to push themselves out there more for other people than they would do themselves? That's why bachelors die, you know, <laughs> you know compared well, to if they're living with somebody. I mean, yeah. why, why is that? Uh, well, human beings are communal, communal beings is basically what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. And as being part of a community is, is about taking responsibility both for yourself and for the other community members. And I think that's what it's about, don't you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I was going to ask, I guess uh, if people in, in, in the support group, it's, uh, I was going to say, or if you're in the boot camp, they can get a deal on, on the support group, but support group doesn't cost any money. It's, it's voluntary. <laughs> it's, it's um, right. OK. And do you, um, so it sounds pretty flexible. I mean, do you, um, uh, I, I guess if anybody would call, um, if one group is filled up, you, you'll, you'll just continue until like an enough yeah. for another one comes up, and you can have uh, rotating groups or uh, on a what do they call that college when <laughs> they rolling admissions, rolling groups, rolling admissions. Yeah, yeah. 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 I actually, I'm yeah, w and each group will decide, and I found that in the past that, that works best. Is you mean in terms of like day of the week or what time? Yeah, the day of, of the week and what time. I have um, you know I have some limitations because of my you know my private work, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there's enough room for some amount of flexibility around that, and the, I think the groups will decide for themselves as well whether or not um, at six they'll close or whether they'll accept two more people, for example, mm -hmm. some weeks later after we start. But but people generally make good decisions about that. And and your your boot camps are primarily in the morning. Uh, yes, right now we're running uh, at six a.m. Uh, so people are they, they're able to get in. It's 45 minutes, so you're in, you're out, and people are still able to make it to work. You know, I, 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 yet, here's yet another exercise program that's like really early in the morning, and people I know who work out, they do it really early in the morning, and, and I, I just wonder, um, you know, have there been longitudinal studies that show the effect of people who wake up early in the morning to exercise and h how they live compared to like a guy like me who wants to sleep in, you know, because <laughs> It's good to have plenty of sleep too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, yes, I want so exercise groups that start like at noon. Then, then <laughs> right. Well, you have to, you have to, you have to go with the program that works for you. Something yeah. that you, you should that, that make make sure that you can stick with it. That's that. The, a lot of the people that do it at six o'clock in the morning, they know if they do that because they know if they don't do it then, then they won't do it. So at it's all. not a physiological reason of like your body's best. Uh, it's the best time for it or anything like that. You're empty of food or there's no reason. For, it's just a scheduling thing. Well, there has been there has been studies shown that the if the ex the earlier you exercise, you're going to get more bang for your buck because you've revved up your metabolism. Yeah. And you're going your metabolism is going to be running higher throughout more, more hours throughout the day than if you were to work out, let's say, at 7 p.m. I, I do know that it's not good to exercise real late at night because it's hard. It wrecks up your ability to sleep or something like that, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then how does that fit in with, don't most people die at 5 o'clock in the morning? So it's <laughs> almost like if, if you don't die... Then, then that's the best time to exit. Well, <laughs> if you're still alive, you if might you're as well still get up alive. and go to class. Okay. Um, yeah. But I think for people who work, like like I do, um, it's one way of being I able to fit it work. in. I forgot about work. That gets <laughs> yeah, in the get way of a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, I mean, you know, I'm an employed mother, so it's g getting to a 6 o'clock class allows me to, you know, take the class, get home, get the lunch made, get the kid to school, and then get off to work myself. You know, I'm still wrestling with this notion of how, uh, if, how you get back to the innate, I guess you're even calling it the innate wisdom or uh, uh, self-preservation kinds of instincts that kids have before they learn all these rules. Um, it just sounds, you know, so contrary to everything that I, I've been brought up on. Mm -hmm. um, would people who are interested in this topic, I mean, can they just? Are they going to be better served to call you cold turkey on this, or is there? Can you re refer them to some reading material? Like, would it be better for them to have some idea of what it is that uh, yeah. you know that you're talking about? Well, uh, when people call, of course, I'm going to talk to them and, and talk to them very specifically about what's going to happen over the eight weeks that they're going to participate. The other thing that I'm going to do, of course, is no, there's no charge to me. They don't have to pay, me, but I am going to ask people if they would purchase the book. And there are two books. One two is two books. Yes. You know, I think I think you can act. Can, can you see? Let, yeah, at one least is called Intuitive Eating, and the the other is Eating on the Run. Um, both of these are, I, I think, are excellent 
excellent books who for people who are ready to um, ready ready to take this journey. Mm -hmm. I think they'll be really very helpful to them. So and and it will be part of the the text. I also have some other articles and research that I would share with people as well. But these are the things that I would uh, ask people to purchase. So uh, that would be a good way to see if. Uh, the uh, the precepts that are espoused in these books ring a bell with with uh, anybody in the audience say that seems to make sense I, I i think it's something i like to try uh mm -hmm. and they they should call you then and you know what bradley i think it would be a really neat thing is in um four or five months time yeah the if the people from the group would love to come and talk to you about what you know they experience by participating if they look a lot happier and they're laughing and everything like that and and they look like in their good shape carlos <laughs> you know, I, I, maybe I can wake up at six o'clock. Uh, you know, once a month. Uh, you, you said four, four week period. Does that mean four, week, four weeks on a row? Can I three. do like one week, one month? <laughs> three times a week. Three times a week. <laughs> oh man. Um, okay. Well, I I think that sounds kind of cool. I mean, it's it's also interesting that Carlos, you've been here in Maplewood for a couple of years, right? Yes. Where did you uh, come from before here? Um, from from the city, uh, Brooklyn. Yeah. 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 Brooklyn. What to kind of? I mean, I know this is off topic. It's a little personal, but. What uh, what brought you out to Maypoint? I mean, what what, what attracted you about? Well, I um, was getting married, uh -huh. and uh, wanted oh, to do it. Yeah, I wanted to move out of the city, yeah. get a little bit more space, and uh, you know, um, believe it or not, it was an article in uh, Money Magazine about the t top ten places to live, and Maplewood was one of them. And we uh, and then you moved here, and you saw all these people who needed some fitness, and says, <laughs> "Get up in the morning, everybody!" Right, right, no, yeah. uh, <laughs> all right. And surely you've been here for a number of years. Yeah, I've been here for a while. Yeah, yeah. okay. And uh, anyway, I guess uh, I, I just want to say I, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves coming here. And I think uh, the people who've been watching, uh, I, hope they'll, I think they'll get something out of it. And I would love to hear how this goes. Um, you know, keep in touch, both of you. And um, until the next time, that's it for Community Corner. I'm Bradley Takahashi. Bye-bye. Let's go. Okay.